This is the uh, Suave General Aviation tutorial, and my name is Emilio Botero. So uh, for this tutorial, the uh, requirements here are Python 3.6 and greater, uh, a Suave 2.5.1 or greater, and the required packages. Um, for this one, it is optional to use OpenVSP, but we will use OpenVSP extensively in this tutorial. So you can run the file, this file without OpenVSP, but if you do have it, you'll be able to do some more in-depth things where we can look at the geometry and change the geometry and then load it back in. Um, for everything that is in this tutorial is not proprietary. Everything comes from the pilot's operating handbook, um, or in this case, I think this is just a pilot's information uh, manual. Um, so this is all just open data, and I'll actually go through in this tutorial how you can actually take this um, data from something like this and get it into Suave and have it be useful. So I'll end this slideshow here, and I'll actually go to... Um, what this looks like. So if I actually go back to that manual I was just showing, everything here I actually got from these 3D sketches. Um, so the top view, the front view, and the side view. Um, and I digitized all of this to get all the dimensions. And so we'll we'll go through how these dimensions are made. And this is useful whether you're building, um, well, really any kind of vehicle. So how to, how to grab dimensions um, from a sketch and then build them into Suave. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the plot digitizer um, because those are very specific to the, the code you have, um, the operating system, whatever digitizer you happen to use. You can do this with a ruler. Um, you could just start printing these out. Um, I had a friend who did this. They print it all out and start taking measurements and then use all these measurements with a ruler and just scale them into, into swabs. So that's totally possible if you want to do it that way too. Um, the point here is I just need to take all these dimensions, these wingspans, and, and get all these dimensions and put them into Suave. So with that, I'm going to start over here with my tutorial, organize my windows here. And as I've done with other tutorials, I'm going to name this. So this is my Cessna live tutorial. I'm going to put my name. Actually, I'm just going to save everyone some time and I'll just copy that over. For the imports here, these are very similar imports to other imports we've I've used in other uh, tutorials. Um, and again, this code will be posted. I'm not going to go through in detail what each of these um, imports does, but I'll highlight a few of them that I will use here. So um, those are pretty standard. Um, we will use propeller design and we'll use some of the information from the, um, the manual I just showed to design the propeller because um, I don't know the full the core distribution um, and the shape of the propeller, but I know some of the aspects of it. Um, I'll also use, use the segment properties and, um, and plots. So those will be there too. And then the other big ones that are going to be new and introduced here are some of the open VSP modules. So the ability to write, get VSP measurements, so wetted areas, and um, then read back it, read it back in. So we can make modifications to the vehicle and read it back. <clears throat> This, again, um, if you've seen these tutorials before, one of the first steps I do is I, I call this main function. I put this all the way at the bottom. That way, when I execute the code um, from either an IDE or the command line, it will go to the main file. So let's start with the main. And again, uh, I'm going to assume some proficiency with Suave to know sort of what I'm doing, but I, I'll break down in this tutorial a little bit more detail how to actually get dimensions and put them in Suave and we'll build up component by component in a little more detail because um, this vehicle is a little bit more complicated than some other ones. Emilio, can you real quick just say oh, at the very bottom there, why is that in an if statement instead of just running the lines? Yeah, so it, uh, you can do it either way, I guess. Um, if you did this, it would still work. Um, you could comment this out. Um, the if name main is just going to say, um, it's going to look for if it's running a terminal or whatever. It it really would still run. Okay. Yeah, it's just a convention we've had, and and actually we can sort of prove that here. Um, and or actually let's do hello world. So if we run that, it should the plot will give an error here, but it will say hello. Should, there we go. So hello world, that import failed is something that machine always does. So, so yeah, the, uh, the if is not necessary, but we have that by convention. <clears throat> All right, so again, I'm gonna spend most of the time of this tutorials um, with 
the um, setting up the vehicle. So that will actually just be mostly this. The mission here that I've set up is just a cruise mission, just to show that um, we can get results that are fairly close to what the that manual gives. Um, and then those will just kind of be a copy and paste. But let's let's now actually build up that definition of the vehicle. So, oops. Let's set up. All right, so we're going to start with a vehicle, which is the suave dot vehicle. Vehicle. We're going to name our vehicle, and that's going to be. Um, if you looked at the manual, it's a Cessna one hundred and seventy-two SP. I think that's a Nav three variant. Um, and then next is the weights, and we can actually just go to the manual here and and pull off those weight values. Um, I think they're. They're pretty quick in here, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time. There's a, a lot of other useful um, dimensions here. So I know the wing area is 174 square feet. So that's very useful. Um, and a, a lot of the other dimensions here are given. So this is like a treasure trove of information that was used to make this, um, this tutorial. I'm not going to go through in detail where each one was found, um, for example, where the weights were. Um, but the uh, the max takeoff weight and takeoff weight are 2550 pounds and the max zero fuel weight is 2555 pounds so you can taxi five pounds over um in the cessna if you've flown one of those and then you can't take off over that uh the g loads um are given actually they're part of the um part 23 there so our, we know our ultimate loads and limit loads here so 5.7 and 3.8 uh, we just saw the reference area here is 174 square feet, and there's a four passenger vehicle. So all pretty straightforward things we can start building there. Now, this is where a little bit of engineering judgment and a little bit of dimensions come into play. So um, again, going back to this image here, we know it's 36 feet and one inch. Um, and again, I can plot, digitize this and what I, end up, what I end up getting when I digitize this and get with a graphing software, I get a, a section of points with um, with with a bunch of values. And I'll actually show you. I, I did this recently. Oops, I thought I had that saved um, somewhere. And so I had an Excel spreadsheet where I wrote all these numbers down. And I know this is definitely the, the most manual possible way to do it. And we're doing aircraft design. This is crazy. Um, but sometimes it's nice to have a, just an Excel spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> just to have all these numbers in front of you um, because these are just gonna be raw X, Y, Z coordinates. And then I'll, I'll take the X, Y, Z coordinates and transform those into just dimensions that I can use for Suave. So it is a little bit of time. Uh, it is a little bit time consuming to take a 3D drawing um, and actually take it into Suave. The manual way, now I'm gonna also go through, we can use OpenBSP um, and we'll, we'll show you how much easier it is once you have created a vehicle on OpenVSP, how to import it. Um, so I'm going to start putting the, this main wing in. Um, and I'm going to call it main wing. We're going to discuss a few things that are interesting in the Cessna as we go through. Um, it's a very simple vehicle, but there are some nuances here. So uh, th there is a quarter cord sweep. So this is sort of the, um, the root value. This is going to be a multi-segment wing, so it'll be a little more complex. And um, I'll go through how those are actually defined. And so some of these top-level parameters get ignored or overwritten in a, in a way um, by by the segment parameters because those will be always take precedence over the baseline ones. So for example, the the default sweep is going to be zero, um, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to assign a, a root segment, and that root segment really takes precedence over the baseline parameters. Um, similarly, the thickness to cord, um, I'm still going to always put it in just because it's good practice to have. So it's a 12% thick airfoil. I actually don't know what the airfoil is. I'm sure um, someone knows what that is, but it's it's probably about a 12%. So that's another engineering judgment. I didn't assign any um, airfoils to this, uh, but we, we can do that um, with Suave. I just don't have those airfoil uh, geometry. So we're gonna ignore that for, for this tutorial, um, but that can be definitely something that Swaf can work with. Um, so the next one is those areas dot reference. And I've mentioned this in um, tutorials before. So this is the wing level reference area. 
but it's not necessarily the same as the vehicle level. The vehicle level reference area can be different. And now um, the wing dot spans. Um, so again, we just had the, the geometry there and it was 36 feet plus an inch. So I'm gonna copy that over. Uh, wing dot cord, so the root cord, and this is really just used um, for the taper rate later. The root cord is 66 inches. Like I said, we're going to chunk this out. So we'll we'll put the wing in. Let's visualize the wing, and then we'll start adding more and more details as we go through. And I'll I'll go a little bit faster through the vertical tail and horizontal tail because the setup for those are very much the same as this main wing. So then we'll do the cords dot tip. And as I alluded to before, a lot of these baseline um, values are not used. So the root cord will always be used, but the tip cord may not be used because if I have specify a tip cord, um, that will basically be overwritten by, um, so this, this value will be overwritten by a segment at the tip. And you're probably wondering why we do that, but it's, it's a little bit of its convention, but also a lot of times I, you know, it's, it's kind of over specifying, but sometimes if I do write something wrong and I want to go back and forth between having segmented wings and non-segmented wings, it's actually very useful. And it seems like that's a very strange thing, but it's nice and suave to go from very simple geometry to very complex geometry and be able to go back and forth um, between the two. So wing dot taper, and that's very simple because that's just your root cord divided by your tip cord. So that's probably not physically um, it's it's accurate, but it's not uh, the best representation. So we don't really use that very often for things, but it's a nice sort of check there. Um, now the aspect ratio, that's just the B squared over S. If for some reason you had a different number in mind here, you could obviously change that. We're just gonna keep it with a, the definition. Now the tricky thing here is uh, from these, this geometry here that I have, I actually don't know what the twists are. So this is probably the one of the few dimensions I can actually pull off um, based on these views. I can't really tell how much this wing is twisted. I could probably try to say that there's a little bit of wash out there. There's probably, and I made a judgment here um, in the segment. So there's probably about three degrees, I would say at the root. I'm just making a guess here and, and maybe zero at the tip. It's hard to know exactly. So I think that this um, this vehicle is rotated here. The stance that it has on the ground is not necessarily the the level angle, I would say. And I'll show you what that what I mean by that later on. When we put this in open VSP. But this, um, but there is definitely some washout here. I just don't know what that is, and I don't think there's enough detail here in this this image to actually pull that off. So we're gonna we're gonna put some wing. Um, we're gonna make a judgment here, um, and I'm gonna say that it's about three degrees here at the at the root and zero at the tip. So I put the three here, not zero, as I had in the tutorial before. Uh, the origin. So again, I can pull off XYZ values. So for this, I actually used uh, somewhere in the midline of the fuselage as my um, the middle of the Y coordinate, and then I and then the um, the front of the propeller spinner as the um, the origin in X. So if you're wondering why that is, and of course it's symmetric um, so that there's no offset to one side. Then it's not a vertical. So we don't really need this because it'll be defaulted as a main wing that it's not vertical, but we're going to put it in anyways. Symmetric, it is a symmetric wing. So that means it's symmetric about um, both sides of the aircraft. And then high lift means that um, we don't have an applied flaps. And now you're probably wondering, well, there are flaps on this. But for the purpose of this calculation, we're actually not going to use the flaps. Um, that's kind of another level of tutorials, how to do control surfaces and suave. Um, it does take a little bit of work to put those in to get all the geometry um, and kind of set the scope of what I wanted to do with this, um, with this tutorial. And then again, the dynamic pressure ratio is 1 because it's in the free stream. So. That's really not used for this analysis, but I leave that in anyways. Okay, now here's how we do segmented wings. And this is now where it gets more important. So as I went through and I defined the, this wing geometry, I made breaks here. So I made a, one segment here at the root. 
I made a segment here where it breaks here between this flap and the aileron here. And then another segment over here. I made an assumption here that the wing was squared off kind of on the tip here. So I don't really account for this area, but you could add an extra segment that was here and then one here if you wanted to. Um, so that's kind of user's choice. I just, again, I just made the assumption that this area kind of all counted in that little tip when I made this. So in specifying this, um, we have a segment, give it a name, the location of this one zero. And again, what I mentioned before is that if you put a segment that's not zero, so for example, um, you know, if it was at 0 0.1, then you would actually use these, these root level properties. But because I am using it at the root, it's gonna overwrite, um, for example, the twist. Um, now the root chord percent, because I did specify root chord, is gonna be 100%, so one of, of this. So it'll be 66, um, again. The thickness to chord ratio, um, thickness to chord, again, because this is the, the root value uh, at zero, it's going to be a 12%, which match up, matches up with this. And then I'm going to specify the dihedral. I didn't specify a top level dihedral, which I could, but I did specify one here. And if we look at the front here, there's actually two sets of dihedral. There's dihedral here, and then there's dihedral here. Um, and to get that, I again, I took some, some numbers off the plots and then rounded them a little bit um, to make it about two and a half um degrees and again this is straight here so no sweep on the quarter cord that's what all these values are for that and then always remember to append that segment it'll be appended in order next we do this break so this break right here same values or same same data structure needs to be added i use the um I use the uh, plot digitizer to come up with these numbers. And again, as a guess on the twist. So I said about maybe two degrees of twist um, with a little bit of washout as it gets towards the aileron. If you've actually seen a 172, it's, it's pretty straight through that section then twists a lot towards the tip. And the, ooh, the one that was tricky to calculate was this quarter cord um, sweep. So all of these values are outboard. So this dihedral is outboard as well as the quarter cord sweep. So these values here, these two, extend from this point to this point, if that makes some sense. So um, the values of dihedral and sweep are specified from here to here. So this is actually um, forward swept in the quarter cord if you do these values. So the leading edge is, is swept back, but the quarter cord, as you measure that, actually goes forward slightly when you do that math out. Um, I, round, I just rounded it, made nice numbers for everyone here. Um, so it's five degrees of dihedral and minus three degrees of quarter cord sweep. I think what I did out, it was like a 2.9 or 2.8 or something. I said, that's probably pretty close to three. Uh, Suave's pretty accurate, but you'll see as we get this open VSP model, a little, you, you can be a little bit off and it, it'll still look pretty much like a Cessna 172. It'll look, it'll look very good. So there's a little bit of um, slack in here. If you guys knew the numbers better, you could definitely put that in there. Um, and then finally the tip, the tip's easy because, well, we know the, um, the span location, um, I had already measured the tip cord. We're just going to say, hey, it's still 12%. The dihedral and sweeps um, outboard don't matter because we're already at the tip. So there's nothing outboard. So those we could just set to zero. And um, we'll copy that one, one in. Now these next two, um, this will be changed in the next version of Suave. There'll just be one method here um, for segment properties and then wing plan form. So these will be these will change soon. But um, this is going to update the segment properties. So each of these segments and I'll actually show what's going to change here before I run this. I'll, I'll put a debug stop and we can look at the value of the wings. This will update the areas here. So we have um, reference, well, we have wetted areas. Actually, that's defaulted to false, but there are, there are um, oh, actually, that's the top level, but each segment will have its own set of areas associated with it. And those need to be updated for drag values. So let me... Um, let me run this and I will show you what changes here when I run that so that you know what that does. There we go. Again, just ignore, this is just a local Python issue. It always is import failed for me. Clear that. So wing um, dot segments. Um, let's see. Sure, I got that right. So we'll look at the root one. 
and I'm going to use the keys just to see what's in there. Um, and I want, I think I want the areas. We'll see what the areas are. Yeah. I don't always remember which things are which. So those are the areas. So right now there's zero. And so what I'm going to show here is then I'm going to go to the next step. And now these are all calculated out. So it actually took the geometry and calculated the reference area, the exposed area, and the wetted area. I'll show you again. Um, the next uh, later, I will show you how to use OpenBSP to get the wetted areas. These are an estimate because it doesn't take into account what areas um, within the fuselage. So if you have, um, especially like a 737 or um, some sort of aircraft where the the fuselage encompasses a large amount of the wing, that'll actually affect the wetted area. So this doesn't account for any sort of um, area that's inside some other vol uh, volume. And then the next step here um, is some more wing plan form sizing. So this just takes um, some of the some of the other properties and calculates just to double check. So it'll actually overwrite some things, but it'll give you the wetted and affected area. And again, I'll show you using OpenVSP um, how to get those otherwise. So this is kind of overkill, but this is one way to do it. Let's now jump around. So we put a wing in. Um, let's save the wing. Um, and open the wing and see what it looks like actually. So we're gonna come back up here. Actually, we're gonna return this vehicle. So we've created a vehicle and the vehicle right now is just some high level parameters as well as a wing. And then we're gonna create a new thing that'll just be, um, I don't know, VSP uh, write and read and it'll take the vehicle. So here we'll def PSP, right, read. I'm gonna just, this should be fairly straightforward, but I'm just gonna check my notes here. Let's actually, let's do, let's write first. So let's save this. Show you how simple this is. So we can write the vehicle. I want to call it C172. And then we'll just open that. So we don't really need a return, but let's run that and then we'll create it. And then I'll open up an open VSP and we'll take a, a look at the wing and make sure it looks correct. All right, well, that was quick. So I've opened VSP open and, oh, you got a preview. Let's discard that. Let's open that up again, actually. Nice. And this is our 172 wing, which apparently didn't write the wing because we didn't append the wing. <laughs> That should. It's kind of one of the, the downsides of a live tutorial. Sometimes I get to do little things like that. Okay, <laughs> yes, now it wrote it here. So if we reopen that file, that's our wing. So Hopefully it looks a little bit like the wing that we see in this image into a top view. And then maybe rotate it around a little bit. Oh, ah. Anyways, yeah, you can see it's it's fairly similar. Um, looks Looks like it. So let's continue on a little bit more. Let's keep adding more realism to this. So that was, really quick how to um, to write the vehicle. Just one line, I'm just gonna write that out. I'm gonna go through fairly quickly how to do, um, how to do the other um, surfaces. So I'll do a simple horizontal tail and a simple vertical tail. Those will be, um, those will not have segments. So they'll just be simple trapezoids. And so those will be fairly straightforward to add. I can't see this, but my zoom bar is in the way. So we'll add those, um, then we'll, 
We'll write them again, and then I'll show you how to update the wetted areas from OpenBSP. So that'll close the feedback loop there a little bit. Um, and then I'll go over in a little more detail about the energy networks, because the energy networks are interesting for this one. So these follow the same um, structure as the, uh, the main wing, so the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer. But there are um, a couple simple changes here. So there's no segment, so I'm not calling that segment sizing um, to get the segment properties. Um, and all these, again, just manually going through dimensions, pulling those off. So let's add that here. So that's the horizontal stabilizer. Again, these are the exact same um, set of data that I needed um, for the other wing. Vertical stabilizer, same thing. There's a couple different options here for a vertical tail, you'll notice. Um, so it is vertical, is not symmetric. So that means that there's no vertical tail below the, the fuselage, so above and below. Um, and then is not a T-tail. Well, let's let's write that and then I will show you the other thing that gets added that is also a wing. While it writes, can you, uh, one more time, why, what does that line do where you say that it's the two-dimensional platform wing area? What does that do in the code? Oh, yeah. So what this does is fill in some some of the blanks on wetted areas, aerodynamic center, um, mean aerodynamic cord, mean geometric cord. So there's there's a few things that's pulling from there. Okay. And if you specified them above, does it overwrite them or it, does it? It would overwrite them. So if you knew what those were, I would not suggest running this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or write them again. If, for example, if you needed to only get, I don't know, if you had flaps on this and you only needed the flap area, that you, you'd unfortunately have to rewrite it again because it's going to get overwritten. So there's there's more than one way to do these sorts of things in Suave, and I know we've gotten questions of like, well, why don't you have it sort of more dynamic where you change one value and everything updates? And first of all, that's tricky. But second, second, it's like there's a lot of I'd like users in Suave to kind of be, um, a lot of people like power users and want to just have control over one variable specifically. Um, and just in that case, if you said, well, what if I knew what the mean aerodynamic cord is and I want to, I want to set this value, especially because this is a top level mean aerodynamic cord, not necessarily just like a segment by segment or, or something like that. And it, it may be that the whatever automatic thing is, is not quite right. And you don't really want to trust that. I'm not saying Suave is yeah, why do you export the open VSP just for confirmation or do you do something in open VSP? So it does a few things. Um, so it is for confirmation and here let's let's like show let's open the vehicle again. The confirmation is huge, but there's a few things that Swab can do and I guess I didn't really explain that from the beginning. Um, what the that's not what I wanted. Um, so the, there's a few things that OpenVSP does. So the, the wetted areas, uh, Suave's wetted areas, when you have something like a fuselage, um, are just not gonna be as accurate as coming from CAD. Um, confirmation is incredibly important to know that uh, the, the geometry, all those dimensions that I just put in were correct, right? If I put one number off, it's gonna look, it's gonna look silly. Um, I know I've definitely just made a typo and put a zero in the wrong spot or a, a period in the wrong spot and everything looks totally different. So, it's confirmation is huge. Now, OpenVSP also has the ability to um, export to other CAD packages. Um, so you can get an IGIS or a STAP. Um, you can run, then you can also take um, the vehicle, mesh it, and run CFD. So Swap has the ability to take the models and take it to CFD pretty much automatically. Um, for, of course, for a Cessna, I would not do this because it's, it's an Euler CFD. But there are a lot of vehicles that I would actually like to get the CFD results. Um, so OpenVSP is super useful for that. It's also, as we notice here, incredibly tedious for me to take the vehicle and draw it out. That took, um, I glossed over a lot of stuff there, but that was a couple hours of getting dimensions to get all of these dimensions from the geometry. Um, but if I could just draw this in open BSP, I'd be, I'd be done here in 10 minutes. It'd be very quick. And I'll show you how quickly you can import a vehicle with open BSP. It's, it's much faster. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So those are all the wings, they all look good. Now, the other thing that um, the vehicle has is our struts. Um, 
So there's more than one way to um, specify this. So you you could try, probably try to do this as another body, but really these struts here are just wings. Um, and so I wanted to account for all the possible sources of drag. If you don't get the drag um, correct on the vehicle, um, the results are going to be or sources of drag. So all the components of source of drag won't be there, and you're not going to get correct results. So I'm going to add the struts here. Those are going to be wings. What's going to be different here is these struts are going to be incredibly thick. So this thickness to cord, they're forty percent. Um, again, I pulled off the dimensions from the drawings um, and added them. So they're just, they're actually just plain wings. They're not a main wing. They're not a horizontal tail. They're just a generic wing. We're going to take those and add them. Um, they're about six inches. So I'm, again, I measured those off the drawing and then put the origins, the dihedrals to make it line up there. I didn't do any sort of sizing here. So there's a question earlier, of like, well, what do you get from the sizing? I didn't really need to do um, any sort of fancy math here because the project areas were easy. The, you know, it's, it's just a, a solid strip. So I didn't need to do any of this sort of sizing there. And again, we can, we can run that and see what it looks like. When you build the strut and you're like attaching the top of the strut to the wing, do you try to get it exact or do you like let it go up into the wing a little bit? Or what if you're a little short, will it assume that airflow can go through that little gap? Yeah, so the best way to look at that would actually be in the um, in the VLM and plot plot from the VLM. Really, you want them to be you want them to be touching because otherwise a, vort a vortex will form in between um, okay. in, the, in the 2D representation. So you want the the midlines to connect if that makes sense. All right, and if you go too far up into the wing, um, I mean, I guess that's okay. Yeah. So if you think about it, it would be a surface there. that would also it would be like an extra surface above that. Um, so let, let's see, actually, I think I extended them. Uh, I just did this visually. They extend a little bit into it, um, but I don't think they're exactly coincident inside. We can also um, plot, we can actually plot this as well using Swallow's plotting tools and we can see what this looks like. But you can see- okay, I But did it's okay get... that it goes up into the wing. Like, I mean, even if it yeah. went further up, it, it is gonna assume that they're heavier though, right? Uh, if you get into the wing? Or does it cancel them out since they're both sharing the same space? So what, Okay, so there's a there's a few things. So the open VSP representation is is going to be different than what Swab's going to visualize it as. So Swab's going to look at it as more of a two D um, flat geometry. So if we plot that. Let me plot it with Swab's geometry, and we we can actually look at this in a little more detail. So um, almost Swab dot plots dot geometry plots. Uh, is it plot? Here, I, I actually forgot what the name of this plotting function is. It's not geometry, it's geometry. That's why import plot vehicle. Um, so we'll that doesn't seem like it wanted to import. There it goes. And then I think the plot dot shows there. So let's let's actually plot that. So I may have been a little bit off when I grabbed the, the geometry, um, but yeah, you do want to get it as close as possible to actually lining up. Here we go. Oh, I should turn off the control points. Prefer open VSP for this kind of thing because this plotting tool map plot live tends to freeze. Um, there we go. Yeah, and it lines up pretty much on top. So I actually think it it did a pretty good job. Are those control yeah. points for the vortex um, lattice method? Yes, so, so they are. It's we haven't actually specified the vortex lattice method. So it's just doing a hypothetically, if it were to do a vortex lattice method, this is what it would do as a default um, so without the, setting the discretization. Is that the quarter quarter point on the panel, or it's, it looks like three quarter point? It's a three quarter point. Um, so this is the control point. So the the panel would have its um, the horseshoe vortex, the front of the horseshoe vortex, line up at the quarter of the the quarter of the panel and then I think I think the control points at the three quarters point 
you're not using vortex rings, just horseshoe vortices. Just horseshoe, horseshoe vortex, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so to answer that question of where should things line up, ideally they should line up such that surfaces touch and they, they seem like they do here, at least as close as I can reasonably get. So let's close that um, for later. We'll just close that because I actually, if, if folks have OpenVSP, OpenVSP is a lot faster to plot things um, and, and run than actually using that plot live. All right, so the next one is the fuselage. The fuselage was the hardest thing to actually put together here. Um, so there's a lot of dimensions, first of all, in the fuselage. And second, there are a lot of segments. So the Cessna has a very complex fuselage shape. So um, starting here, I think I started all the way at the tip here. I count this spinner as, as part of the fuselage here. But put it here, um, put a segment here, 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 um, here. And then I think I just did one at the end. Um, so you could, you could add, you could make this as complicated as you want or as simple as you want. I did something that's in between. So I did something that was not too much work because if I went through in excruciating detail, this would be an incredibly boring tutorial. But I did enough that you could see like, okay, if I added more segments, if I really spent a lot more time getting more exact geometry from this, I could definitely get this perfect. Um, and so let's let's actually just dive in and, and I'll show you how to how to add those. Um, so we're going to define a fuselage. Um, I don't know why I have tagged twice, so we don't need both of those. Uh, it's a four seat fuselage. There's no pressure differential, so that's used for weight analysis. That one's really not necessary here. Um, so the width of the fuselage, I was able to pull off it's 42 inches. So the maximum height is 62. Um, the total length is 326. Um, so the empennage, so that's basically where the cabin ends. And so again, all these dimensions you can pull directly off of this. So the empennage lengths, um, the cabin lengths here, uh, the structural lengths. Um, so all these sorts of things. Um, don't really need the volume, internal volume so much. Um, those were just some, kind of something that was tried. And as I mentioned before, we'll, we'll use OpenVSP to get the wetted areas. We, won't, we can use this for now. Actually, I think I might've saved that from OpenVSP. Um, the finest ratios, the, um, those are actually incredibly important swabs. So if you do put a fuselage in the finest ratios uh, do actually drive a lot of the drag analysis. So that helps um, build up um, kind of like the finest ratio that ends up being a ratio there that's used for some of the, the coefficients of drag. Um, I know that's incredibly vague, but there's a lot more to that. Uh, the nose lengths and then the heights. Um, so these are all pretty, these are all really important in, in for drag buildups. Now there's a question I got the other day for, um, about what's actually used and what's not, and why do we put all these segments there? So the segments are really useful right now to get wetted areas um, and, and really just a better sense of how the vehicle is going to work. So Suave's not going to use these segments for wing, uh, for fuselages, for wings it does, but for fuselages, it's not going to use these um, for drag buildup. So it's going to assume that you have a very, still a streamlined shape. So you can't just put something incredibly blunt in here and expect Suave to understand that that's going to be uh, you know, a penalty to the drag and that's going to, going to affect things. It's still going to assume that there's a streamlined shape and, and use these. Uh, these are a lot easier to um, specify here than, um, than in, than in uh, the wings. So we're going to build up similarly. So they'll have segments um, that go through that segment zero um, and, and they're going to be in X locations. And then there can also be perturbed up and down. So that's unlike in a wing. So the first uh, Z location, this is again a percentage of length, not, um, not a height. So just be careful of that. So this 326 is 326 inches in length. Um, and I'll, hopefully that's, that is clear. So this is a percentage of the entire length that the, that, that segment center is, is perturbed one way or the other. So I'm gonna copy that over. So that's the first one. So that's the, the tip. So again, that, oops, that propeller spinner is offset by 16 inches from wherever the center is here. So 16 and three quarters of inches up. And again, it's normalized by the length of the vehicle. 
as we go through, again, I just pulled these off of, of um, the geometry files, the, the, the POH there, and just did some Excel calculations to get, hey, it's this disgusting number um, with these heights and then the widths. The widths are a little bit easier um, because once you have the widths at one point in this, in this vehicle, um, so we go back to this. We look at the front, we really have one real width here. We can also grab widths from this. Um, but for most of this, it's actually all pretty much like 40 inches and then it tapers back here. So that you'll see a lot of 40 and 42s as I just hold that constant. So I'm not gonna go through in detail exactly all of these. I'm just gonna copy and paste because there's what, seven of them. So I'm gonna copy and paste all seven of these. And then append this to the vehicle. And then we're going to play and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, and it wrote the fuselage as well. So one thing I will note here is Swab does not have um, squared off sections. Uh, it only has rounded sections here. So if you look at this seg segment here, it only has a height and width. So it's going to basically make an ellipse. So that is one assumption. Again, our fuselage drag would not understand um, a totally squared off uh, fuselage. That's, that's one limitation that Swab has at the moment um, is there would be, if you had a squared off fuselage, some weird vortices, you'd have some weird interaction effects that's not handled by Swab. So you only really have the option of an ellipse. Now, OpenVSP, of course, you can draw any shape you want. You could specify it to be anything that's complicated. However, Swab will not handle that. So just keep that in mind. So this is going to come up as sort of an elliptical shape. But if we look at the left, sorry, the top view, uh, maybe I need to fix that first one. Let's do fill on screen. So this one's a little bit too wide there because what OpenVSP is doing when it lofts, it kind of gives us rounded out shape. So maybe I can, that was that second segment here, decrease it a little bit. Um, there's this one, segment zero, segment one. So maybe do this be 39 or something here. One of the cool things, and maybe we'll actually just play around with the geometry and show how you can change the geometry and make it look a little bit, a little bit better here. But yeah, it looks like a Cessna 172. Um, again, because the fuselage is rounded off, the struts actually don't connect right here. Um, and I didn't add a segment here at the end, but I could add another one here that bring it through. It is a little bit trickier. And again, I could add a lot more. I could spend all day adding geometry detail here. But again, this is conceptual design. I didn't want to spend a ton of time to get this exact rudder placement that goes inside, um, this exact fuselage shape. So this is just a quick, hey, this looks like a Cessna 172. And we're going to do this tutorial in less than an hour. All right, so that's the overall geometry. Now we're going to do um, the network. So this is something that can't be modeled in OpenVSP directly. We can model the, the propeller, but we can't model the engine per se. So uh, this is the internal combustion propeller um, network. And this is the one of the simplest networks we have. We just have an engine and a propeller. And it's, it's actually as, as straightforward as it, gets, as it gets. This is the whole network here. So I'm going to copy a lot of this through. So it's going to be an internal combustion. It's going to have one engine. Um, and the engine's going to be an internal combustion engine. As we can see from the manual, it's 180 horsepower. Um, it's not flat rated. So the flat rated altitude is zero, which means that we don't have a turbo or a supercharger. It's rated to 2,700 RPM. The power specific fuel consumption, 0.52. So that, I don't think that's given in the, uh, the Cessna literature, but I was able to find that number online um, as a reasonable value. And we ended up getting fairly good results with that. All right, now for the propeller. Um, so two-bladed propeller. Um, the origin, actually this origin should be um, not zero exactly in the X direction, but I'll fix that here in a second. These numbers here, so I don't have the geometry of the propeller directly from, from the POH. It does, it does not give me the blade twist and the, and the cords. So I had to make an assumption here and I had to design it. So to design this, I actually went to the manual and if you go to uh, the performance section here, all the way at the end, I'm not going to find the exact page, but 
there are the cruise parameters of this vehicle um, somewhere in one of these plots. Um, not too far. That's weights. I think section five. Yeah, it's one of these. So short field different distances. So cruise performance. So actually, I can pull off the cruise performance at an altitude here, and um, and I know that hey, at 119 knots um, at 2650 RPM, which is one of these. I think it's this one here that I'm making 64 percent of my brake horsepower. So 64 percent at 12,000 feet. I made an engineering assumption here. It's about you know a CL of the 2D CL of this this airfoil, um, and I know the tip and hub radius because I have the dimensions. I can design out the blades. Um, I'm going to assume an airfoil. I'm going to assume a NACA 4412. I'll, these are included in the tutorial when you do download them, and then each um, each station in the um, propeller is going to use the zeroth airfoil, which is the first one. So they all use the 4412. That's what all these zeros mean. So this is the this is the first one. So this is the zeroth. Um, so all 20 stations. Now there's there's simpler ways to do this, but this is just to show that you need to specify. I want to show here you can specify you have to specify the airfoil at each station. And if, for example, you had two airfoils, so you had maybe a Clark Y, the next one would be whatever airfoils NACA or sorry airfoils uh, Clark Y. Um, and you would change this to one. Um, if you, for example, you blended to a Clark Y or you blended to a 0012, I don't know why you would, but you could you could change your airfoils throughout the, the stations in the propeller. So that's what's going on there. And then here is actually gonna run the design routine that we back at Adkins routine that I've used before. And again, there's 20 stations and, and use those to actually build it up. So let's copy this in. And also going to change, because I didn't here, I'm going to move the origin of the propeller is not at zero because the zero is the spinner. So we're going to put this at five inches back. Save everything and let's run this. Oh, I actually need to. And I need to append the network as well. So I appended the propeller, but I did not append the full network, which I need because I'd like to show what the propeller looks like after it's designed. Oops. What are we missing here? Geometry files. Oh, yeah, it's because my live tutorial, um, I didn't save the geometry files here. So let me just copy those over for a second. Uh, where do I keep them? They're in my. All right. There we go. So at each station, it's actually going to write an airfoil file. Looks like it's good to go. There we go. And I could probably move that back a little bit. It's not all the way back where it should be. Maybe it's uh, 10 inches back. But yep, that looks like sort of like Cessna 172, but with a rounded fuselage. So to the front. Dimensions look about right. Again, for conceptual design. And I don't have it here as a default, but you can make that circle a little bit larger. And you can see that the if the blade were to be larger, sorry, not larger, if this <laughs> circle would be larger and actually follow the radius that it would actually extend and, and look very much like this picture here. So that's the geometry. Now, again, this geometry I put together was not that great, right? It's just a quick, it was a quick something to do. Now I I can, I already explored the geometry to OpenVSP. Now I can take it to OpenVSP and tweak it and I can make it better. I can actually tweak all the geometry, start adding more sections and actually get it to be what I want it to be. So that was actually sort of a, a feature here I wanted to show is, all right, so I have the vehicle, it looks pretty good, but it's not quite right. I've, I've written it. I want to actually, um, read the vehicle back. So 
I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you how to update the wetted areas of everything. Um, so I have a few more minutes here. The wetted areas, I'll do that first because it's very quick. So there's a v get VSP measurements, um, and it will automatically save it as, I guess you could change this name here, but the default was unnamed comp geom. And it's looking for the wetted area. So I'm going to copy this over. This is going to take the vehicle, and it's going to um, write up the measurements, what you get back, and I'll show this to you in a second, what you get back is actually um, a, dic a Python dictionary with all the wetted areas, and then those have to be assigned to each of the wings. I'll show what that what I mean by that in a second, because that's might be unclear to a new user. So Apologize. So you can see here, um, I have the main wing wetted areas here, um, the horizontal stabilizer areas, as well as the vertical stabilizer areas um, and the struts. So I'm going to go through each wing in the vehicle wings and assign um the wetted areas from these so the main wings wetted areas will then be assigned to this value and so this is a quick way to update that okay and then finally if i wanted to i can also read from open vsp um when you read from open vsp however open vsp doesn't have any sort of notion of uh network so it doesn't know what the engine is it only knows the geometry so because of that i need to give it a network now i can cheat because we already set it up and we can set this again. If I'm going to read from OpenVSP, I'm going to create a new vehicle. So I can, I can take the vehicle, modify it, and create a new vehicle. So I'm going to create an, an entirely new vehicle right here. So I'm going to uh, assign this new vehicle. So we can call this vehicle two. So our network, we're going to steal again. We're going to steal from the old one. Question. So that network already exists. We're going to clear the propellers. The reason we're going to clear the propellers is that the propellers already have a geometry on there, and I've already saved that propeller um, to open VSP. And then we're going to create a new Cessna. And we're going to read VSP read. And we're going to read C172. VSP3. We're not going to use scaling. That means is um, so there's there's scaling here. We can in open VSP we can take a, a vehicle and rescale it arbitrarily. Um, we're not going to do that. So we're going to disable that option. Now we're going to take this vehicle that we already created and we're going to change something. Um, I don't know. Well, well, maybe we'll make the, the vertical stabilizer taller or something like that. So we can increase that span. Maybe we'll actually make the fuselage look a little better. We'll, we'll fix this top segment because that looks, this first one looks a little bit too wide. Let's see. Yeah, that one looks a little bit too wide. So we'll decrease the width and make it look a little nicer. Is that doing all of, okay, it's doing. There we go. That looks a little bit better. You can play with all the other dimensions. Maybe, you know, I can I can start adjusting the vehicles just with sliders and making it look really nice. Could spend all day making it look beautiful. And then come back, save it. And I'll return this new Cessna. So I'm not going to spend uh, on this tutorial. I'm actually going to stop right here rather than showing the mission. But you can take this new vehicle and you can run this new vehicle through the mission. And so it is, um, yeah. So we've taken a vehicle, we entered it manually within into Suave. Um, we saved it to Open VSP. We read some dimensions from it, and then we actually just modified it manually. And uh, actually, I'll take it back that everything we just did got overwritten. So, cause I wrote it again, but you can come through it and, and not um, overwrite it. But so it's gone through the full cycle and you've gotten the, the full thing right there. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. I'm gonna 
stay on here before stopping um, recording. But yeah. I'll stop recording right here. <laughs>